Myths are not stories that are untrue. Rather, they are tales that don't fit neatly into the historical record, which serve as a foundation to a culture. It was a time of trial for the tribes of Israel. They were no nation, no unified group under a king. Rather, they were a loose confederation bound together by their covenant with God, a covenant they had just broken. The Israelites had done evil in the eyes of the Lord again, which is kind of a theme in Judges, and so God delivered them into the hands of the Philistines. But God was also super into helping people who couldn't have babies have babies back in the Old Testament. So while the Israelites were having their time out under the oppression of the Philistines, one of his angels came to a woman who had long prayed for a child and said, Drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And so the child was born, and the family made sure to keep the Nazarite oath, a special oath among the Israelites, not only to obey God's laws, but also to refrain from alcohol, keep away from corpses, and never cut their hair their entire life. Foreshadowing. The boy grew up strong, mighty like no other. And when he was old enough to wed, he went to the city of Timnah, and there he met a woman he desired to marry. But his father and mother were shocked, for this woman was a Philistine. After much begging and pleading, he convinced them that they should come with him and arrange the marriage. So, as they went through the vineyards towards the great city, a great lion blocked their way. It roared with rage, ready to spring upon them. But before it could leap, the Spirit of God filled Samson, and with his bare hands, he grabbed it by the jaw, and with bone-splintering strength, rent its head in twain. Safely arriving in the city, the marriage was arranged. When at last the time for the wedding came, Samson went back to Timnah. But on his way, he saw something strange. It was the lion he had slain. In its carcass, a swarm of bees had made a nest. So he reached in and scooped out a handful of honey, eating it as he went. How this qualifies as either A, a good idea, or B, not an unclean thing under Nazarite rules, I don't know. But apparently Samson thought it was a great idea. An idea so great that he even gave his folks some of the honey without thinking to mention where it came from. And it also inspired one of the most unfair riddles of all time. Because at his pre-wedding feast, Samson stood up and said to his 30 groomsmen, If you can solve my riddle by the seventh day of our feast, then I will give you 30 garments and 30 new sheets. But if you can't, you owe me the same. And the groomsmen said, All right, let's hear this riddle. So Samson intoned, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the stronger came forth sweet. Of course, this was a private joke because it was about the honey that had come out of the lion. And I mean, come on, how is anyone supposed to get that? So, of course, the groomsmen didn't. And on the seventh day, being good, upstanding gentlemen, they forfeited and handed over the cloth. Oh, wait, no, they didn't. They went to the bride-to-be and told her they'd burn her house down if she didn't press her husband for the answer and then tell it to them, which she did. So at the sunset of the seventh day, they proudly stood up and answered Samson's riddle, which he was not happy about at all, because he knew the only way they could have gotten the answer was from his fiancée. But a promise is a promise, and Samson, being a good upstanding gentleman, worked hard, labored night and day, and paid off his debt. Oh wait, no he didn't. Instead he went to a nearby village, killed 30 dudes he'd never met before, and jacked their clothes and sheets, giving those to the groomsmen because that's the only reasonable thing to do in this situation. But guess what? By that point, one of the groomsmen had married his fiancée, and nobody thought to tell Samson about it. Funny joke, huh? So when Samson went to see his bride-to-be, his would-be father-in-law wouldn't let him in, and said that he had thought Samson was displeased with his daughter, so he married her off to someone else. But don't worry, if Samson would like, he had a younger daughter that was just as good. Because that's how these things worked. 
hard eye roll happening right now. Saddened and disheartened by this, Samson, upstanding gentleman always, went off for some time of quiet contemplation to think about and rebuild his life. Oh wait, no he didn't. Instead he caught 300 foxes, tied their tails together, stuck a burning twig between their tails, and then released them into the fields of his would-be family. Because again, it was the only reasonable response. Also, quick side note, how do you tie 300 foxes together without being nipped to death? Asking for a friend. The fire ravaged the fields of the entire town. And so soon, a mob gathered. And they said, Who has done this? To which someone answered, Samson, because his wife was given away to another. And so the mob, being upstanding gentlemen all, talked about it for some time and decided that while their response was childish and disproportionate, they could clearly see that Samson had been tormented by grief and so would give everyone a pass just on this one. Oh, wait, big ol' nope to that, too. Instead, they decided that the best course of action would be to burn alive Samson's ex fiance and her father because not consigning your daughter to marry such a well-adjusted individual is clearly a crime. So then Samson killed a whole bunch of them and went to hide in a cave because, you know. But by this point, the Philistines now got together an army. Because as we've determined, escalation was just the call du jour this story. And they demanded that the people of Judah turn over Samson. So, the people of Judah went up to Samson's cave and were like, Dude, do us a solid and come out of there so we can turn you over to the Philistines and not have them kill us all. Thanks. To which Samson replied, Okay. So they bound Samson tightly and handed him over. But when he was in the Philistines' camp, the Spirit of God came to him again, burnt away his bonds, and filled him with strength, which he proceeded to use to beat to death a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. Of course, seeing this feat, and being upstanding gentlefolk all, the people of Judah decided to make Samson a judge. Really? That's actually what happened this time. But to find out how it all worked out, Join us back around the campfire next time. Though my guess is it ends with people talking about them on the internet thousands of years later. But, you know, I might be biased. Legendary thanks to patron Kyle Murgatroyd. 